Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Las Vegas. It is so good to be together, both virtual and in person. My name is Nina, your worship associate today, and I use she, her pronouns. Our worship leader is Mark, who uses he, him pronouns. Whoever you are, wherever you're from, whatever you believe about life's journey, you are welcome here. We broadcast a video feed for our virtual attendees. If you wish not to be recorded, please sit to the back or sides of our sanctuary. Today, during Of Our Hearts, we will read the name of anyone written in the book or in the chat. So as a reminder, as you come in, that book is right on that table uh, at our entrance. When we come together, we get to practice creating inclusive, worshipful spaces together. For those in the sanctuary, we encourage you to wear a name tag that includes your pronouns. And for those in our virtual space, please edit your Zoom name to include your pronouns. Please silence your cell phones. And if you're on Zoom, refrain from using the chat. Please also, while you're here with us today, move in ways that your body needs. It's okay if you need to wiggle, stand up, sleep, or fidget. All bodies are welcome here. Welcome to our service. Before we ring the bell, please take a moment to share some love. You can put your hand over your heart, give a greeting, say hello. Let's welcome everybody who is in here today. Thank you, Nina. The Unitarian Universalist Congregation of Las Vegas is situated on the traditional homelands of the Nuuvi Southern Paiute people. We are grateful for the land itself, for those who have stewardship for generations, with this generations, and the opportunity to worship, learn, work, grow, and be in community with this land and her peoples. We encourage everyone present here to engage in continued learning about the indigenous people who continue to live and work on this land, including the Las Vegas Paiute tribe and the Moapa band of Paiutes, and learn about the historical and present realities of colonialism. It is important to recognize and appreciate the use of Southern Paiute land as part of our mission to become a welcoming and inclusive place of worship, spiritual enrichment, and exploration. Do I have any kids that would like to help light the chalice today? While we gather together, we light the chalice, a symbol of our Unitarian Universalist faith. The chalice reminds us that we are connected to a much larger religious tradition that stretches out of the past and reaches around the world and leads it to our shared future. And join with me. We light the chalice as a reminder that together we are a beacon in the desert. May its light lead the way to love, acceptance, and justice as we strive for personal and societal transformation. Today's opening words were written by Reverend David Bredeen and is titled, Where Equi Equity and Justice Transcend Mere Dreams. Welcome to this place where equity and justice transcend mere dreams, where they are the air we breathe. Enter this sanctuary, all who yearn for respite from the, a world rife with scarcity and inequity, rife with the relentless shackles of privilege and bias. Come, embrace this space. Be embraced by this place, this refuge where scarcity and disparity dissolve. Into we, together, crafting a place 
where breath of life is equity and justice, cherished, manifested, sustained. Please rise and body your spirit to sing our opening hymn, This Little Light of Mine. Even though it's number 118 in the, in the gray hymnal, the words are going to be up here, so don't follow in the, long in the words. <laughs> so, all right. And Margaret will lead, check, lead us off with Richard and Kay. Four verses, right, Mark? Yep. Four verses. But they're up there. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. Come, 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 not to put you on the spot. Come have a seat. Join us. So I am going to tell you a tale this morning. And this is a tale that comes to us from India. Now, this is a tale about an elephant and a monkey and a wise owl. So elephant and monkey were best of friends. They spent all day playing and enjoying life. And one day, they got to talking. An elephant said, of course, you know, I am the best animal in the world because I am big and strong. And monkey looked at elephant and said, <laughs> no. I am the best animal in the world because I am quick and fast and can climb so high. And the two began to argue and argue and back and forth and pretty soon we're not looking like friends at all. So they decided we must do something about this. We must figure out which one of us is the best animal world. And so they approached Wise Owl, who was known to be quite wise in all the land. And they went to Owl and they said, Owl, which one of us is the best? Is it Elephant, who is big and strong? Or is it Monkey, who is quick and able to climb high? And the Owl said, well, I will be able to tell you which of the two of you it is but you must do something for me first. You must cross into far distant lands and pick the fruit from the highest tree. And so the two of them began out. They set on their journey together, all the while fighting. I am better than you. No, I am better than you. And so they eventually came to a great wide river and Monkey stopped, set up. I cannot cross this river. I will not be able to show that I am the best animal because I cannot get that fruit. Well, Elephant looked at Monkey and said, climb, 
onto my back, my friends, and I will carry you across, for I am big and strong, and this river is no match for me. And so Monkey climbed on top of Elephant's back, and the two of them went across the river to the other side. And they walked a while longer, and pretty soon they came to that highest tree with beautiful golden fruits at the top. And the elephant began to try to reach with its trunk, but could not reach the fruits. And then began to try to climb the tree and shake the tree and the fruits. They would not budge. And the elephant said, oh, we cannot find out who is the best of the two of us because I cannot get to the top of the tree to grab the fruit. Alas, what will we do? And the monkey said, oh, do not worry. Let me hop from your back up the tree and I will grab the fruit for us. And so he got to the top of the tree and grabbed the fruit, and down they came, and back together they went until they reached the wise old owl. And they reached the owl, and the owl said to them, Well, which of the two of you has brought me this fruit? That is the one who is the best animal. And the monkey said, Well, of course it was I, for I climbed to the top and I picked the fruit. And the elephant said, Ah, but you would not have been able to get there had it not been for me being able to cross the river. And so the owl looked at them and said, of course, there can be no contest, for each one of us is unique, and each one of us brings different skills and talents. And so it is the two of you together who make the best. We will now ground ourselves in the present and honor the thread of humanity that connects us as Libby Beans. If you have someone you'd like held up, please add their name to the chat if you are on Zoom. As humans striving towards a beloved community, we have the privilege and responsibility to hold each other as we live the joys and sorrows of life. We take this sacred time to acknowledge the people we hold in our hearts that in sharing our triumph and joy may be multiplied and our pain and sorrow lessen their sting. We will now partake in a common UU ritual of marking our joys and sorrows by dropping a pebble in the water. The pebble signifies a lightness or burden on your heart and the water the love and strength of community to surround, support, and celebrate you. Today is a silent ritual. If you have a name to lift up, please write it in the book or in the chat. We will read those names during the service. There is also a small bowl of lightly scented eucalyptus oil if you'd like to anoint yourself to seal this practice. If you'd like to play, participate, please come forward. All are welcome. And as we do this ritual today, we will sing in As I Breathe, I think is the name of the song, something like that, <laughs> number 1009. The words will be up on the screen when I breathe in. I breathe in. <laughs> so please come forward. There are two main vocal parts to this. There's the drone and the melody. The melody is up on the screen, but the drone is very, very easy. I hope you'll join me first, everybody together singing the drone. And then as the spirit moves you, feel free to join me when I switch over to the melody.
now drop a pebble into the bowl for those who are participating remotely and a second pebble for those who wish to do so anonymously we hold you too in our hearts know that as a religious community we have a group of volunteers who can provide pastoral care such as delivery of home-cooked meals providing occasional rites phone call checkups, and much more. If you need assistance, please reach out to them at UUCLVCares at gmail.com. Today we hold in Mary Ann, John, Al and Joan, Dave Veter, Lanisha Pugh, Jamie, Albuia, Nancy, Jan Paddock, who's recovering from cancer removal surgery in Indio, California. Harry Chin, Connie Chin, who could also use friendly calls. Michael Soke, Jay Trent, Alicia and Clay Brown. Irma, is there anyone in the chat? Yes. Yes. We have, we have award, award winning, winning truth. truth. Telling, telling journalist, journalist Julian, Julian Assange, Assange. Dwayne, Dwayne Chestnut, Chestnut. And, and Alice, Alice Kennedy, Kennedy would, would appreciate, appreciate contributions, contributions to, to her, her GoFundMe. Go Fund May we hold all that was spoken and all that is kept in our, the silence of our hearts in love and compassion. Our pastoral prayer today is Justice is Our Prayer, written by Reverend Rebecca Savage. Spirit of life, eternal mystery that holds us close, receive the meditation of our hearts this day. We come together in this quiet moment to unify our hearts again towards the clarion call of our time. May justice and equity guide us to greater connection a greater truth. Our part is just as great. Approach dismantling systems of oppression within us in order for us all to be free. To know that when I cherish, I tend to the divine spark within me. When I know in my bones that I am worthy of love and whole just as I am, that there is a greater potential for mutual understanding and care. Love is not scarce. Our ability to extend compassion and grace can be. I place my hand over my heart and know I can feel the spirit of life within me. I invite you to place your hand over your heart and feel the spirit of life within you. The spirit of life is divine within us. The spirit of life is here. This is the beginning of justice and equity when we go within in order to be service in our communities and our world. May it be so. Amen. Blessed be. The reading today is from a book called Undrowned. Black Feminist Lessons from Marine Mammals by Alexis Pauline Gums. Okay. 
Apparently, the black-chinned dolphin in Tierra del Fuego and the southern coast of South America does not whistle, she thrashes. Sometimes, Legenthotychus australis, which is her scientific name, is called an entrance animal because she lives in the swift moving water, the narrow spaces, the entrances to channels, the kelp forests, and the estuaries. Maybe Audre Lorde would say she loves in doorways coming and going. Though they are one of the few dolphins that scientists believe never whistle, they must communicate somehow because they choreograph. Sometimes they stretch out into a line to feed cooperatively or work together to make a large circle. Or in their most impressive synchronized swimming move, they make a flower for formation with their bodies and they flail until they create their own whirlpool and allow everyone to eat. Yeah, sometimes you have to create your own whirlpool, redirect the waters, initiate a spiral of momentum that can displace whole governments. And I respect that. Respect and love for those who thrive in narrow places, the in-between spaces of change. Gratitude to those who have made movement their method and upheaval their home. And who, without even a whistle, know when to get in line, when to make a circle, and when to spin the ocean. And know it with the drum of their whole bodies, who have practiced merengue so they know just when to turn, and whose bomba call and response has become seismic now. It's impossible to ignore. And thank you for your grace. The way your necessary agility in the face of closed doors and narrow passages has made you that much more attuned to how we move together. And thank you for your willingness to churn the waters up. Alone, you are an acrobat, the bravest of survivors. Together, though, we show the ocean the edge of itself. We show the tide, the turn within us. Thrash a language out of action. Get fluent, loved ones. Watch our bodies. Together, we speak change. Every week, we gather as a religious community to give each one of us a place where we can do the work of many. The offering supports the mission of the congregation to be a beacon of love and justice in the desert and supports local organizations working to make our community a better place for all. The offering this month is shared with our own UUCLV food pantry. Our food pantry is held on the third Sunday of each month, and this month the food pantry will be on February 24th. In addition to financial support from the offerings during this, this, the services this month, we are also running a hygiene product collection, and the event itself needs volunteers the morning of. The food pantry is one of the important and impactful ways that we can work together to make our community a better place. We help feed hundreds of people right here in our neighborhood. This offering is a spiritual practice of generosity that our congregation does as a whole week, and we invite you to participate as a member or a friend in this practice. If you're on Zoom, the link to donate your offering will be in the chat, and our ushers will pass plates where you can donate. And now, please join with me with gratitude for the abundance in our own lives, we give for the life of this congregation and the benefit of the larger community. And today, if you want to specify part of your donation to support our wonderful guest musician that I think has brought a number of us to tears already today listening to the sanctuary full of music, please use an envelope and just write the word music on that. That way we can maybe pay him more than he's expecting and we'll make sure it gets to him before he leaves today.
Thank you all for your wonderful gifts and for your gifts of both treasure and time. And now I'd like to invite Bobby Lloyd forward to come up and talk about stewardship. Well, I started, um, my family started us at the Unitarian Church in Danbury, Connecticut when I was six years old. And um, we were there till I was 12. It was a fantastic church. The building was what everybody here would love to have. Um, un unfortunately, I've heard that it's gone. It was probably built in the late 1800s, early 1900s. I don't know, it had one of those wall pipe organs and the um, raised chancel for the minister and the choir. Um, and the, the, we, from there we went, we moved to Scottsdale, Arizona, and we went to the Phoenix Church. The Phoenix Church was right next door to Barry Goldwater's house, and back then he was running for president, so that, that was unique. Um, one, one Sunday, my age group, we didn't, a couple of Sundays we didn't have the uh, church leader, and so we played outside, and um, a couple of the boys went and climbed on the wall of Barry's uh, house. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> but um, I, I spent about 20 years where I didn't go to church from my sophomore year of high school until um, 1988, Easter Sunday. And I brought the kids here, my, they were seven and nine. And um, Bob Steffen greeted us, ushered us. Where's Bob? So, um, and it was at the university. And there's only a few of us that, that are here today, and I'm glad they're here. Pat Aurora and, and uh, Marietta Nelson that um, were, were there back then. It, it, uh, the Catholic Church shared the, the facilities and we did a, a bunch of interesting things. One thing, they had a penny auction this one time, and my son, who's autistic, um, and you know, he was a little guy, I brought him with me, and he sat there patiently watching what everything, everything that was going on, and he surprised me. He, he bid on a couple things, um, which, which really made me feel wonderful. Um, and, and there were, um, a lot of other interesting things. And then when we got this building, it, it was uh, uplifting because we own this building. Everywhere we had before, we were just uh, had to move, like the kids' stuff, we had to lock them up in a cupboard. And, um, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't the greatest of circumstances. And, um, you know, this, this is, I, I love this place, and I love that we have land here, and we could do so much with it. When, um, back in the 90s, for several years, we were the cleanup at the Red Rock Canyon Pine Trail, and so um, that was, I think, like once a month we got together and did the trail. And also, around that time, we had a women's group and Susanna Monette was a big part of that, as I was. And um, one time, Susanna had a cabin, a friend that owns the Mount Charleston cabin. And so we had a, a woman's retreat at the cabin. And I was designated the cook. And um, I cooked a bunch of Mexican stuff. And of course, I ran late. So everybody was concerned when I didn't get up there. So I was very popular when I did get there. <laughs> and um, so let's see. Um, and we've, we've had a, a bunch of, of fun community building programs like Nino and, and Rory were a big part of. And here it was held at the Oki, the park on Oki. And also some of the things we've done is we've had uh, gay movies, period, 
where you, um, we even sold popcorn and snacks for people and very good movies. So it was a, a nice social thing going on. Um, and, and I, you know, I hope you all appreciate how um, all of us appreciate you and, and you coming. It's not like other churches where you have to be saved and to, um, you need to attend church, otherwise you're, you're not in good graces. So um, it takes a little more goal setting to get out of bed and go to church. Um, I also wanted to tell you about our camp outs, which we're gonna have one next weekend, I believe. Um, and, and Mark is one of the big people behind that, and that's, they're a lot of fun. I, I love camping, I just don't like all the work. <laughs> but one thing that, that um, the service auction has changed with the pandemic, and um, Rose and Nancy have done a fantastic job of putting it online, but it started out years ago where you actually got a service, and that's what the service auction, it was mainly services, which was really neat, because I'm not all that handy and, and don't have a handyman in my life, but, but now we need handymen that, that will volunteer their services when we do have a service auction, and, and it's fun, you're doing a big service. Um, I, I ended up, I did for 11 years, I did a dinner at my house, and um, I don't do that anymore. But um, Mark Hall Patton got a big kick when we were in doing the service auction here, and we, we would have nice tables set up and, and uh, eat first. But he, do, does everybody know who Mark Hall Patton is? Um, he was on the TV show with the, um, thank you, Pawn Star. And he's a historian, and he's very good at talking. Um, so hopefully we'll get him back and we'll start doing it in, in here. Um, and another thing I'd like to say is how much I enjoy greeting. I've been doing it for like 11 years where I'm the head greeter. And if you decide you want to meet people, um, an easy way to, to get to know the people is if you greet, and, and I'll help you do that. So um, keep coming. Thank you. Thank you, Bobby. Can you guys hear me OK? Yeah, OK, good. So hard at being back here, you don't hear what's coming out of the speakers. What are you guys coming up here for? <laughs> it's the gift box. Did you hear that crash? Oh, thank you. <laughs> it says to the church community from Alana and Alia. <laughs> Adira, I'm sorry. Let's open it up here. Oh, it's a beautiful picture. We'll have to post that somewhere, huh? Thank you. We could. Yeah. More over there. Yeah. We'll figure out a place. All right. You guys know the drill. Isn't Leo going to come up here? <laughs> nope. <laughs> what do you think it is? Uh, it sounds like plastic, sort of. Plastic. <laughs> Same. Plastic. It's not plastic. I guarantee you that. Tesla keys. Uh, no, we're not that rich. <laughs> I love the guests, though. <laughs> American flags. Why do you think we put American flags in there today? We're in America. We're in America, yeah. And it's a symbol of freedom. A symbol of freedom. Okay. There's also much other symbols with it, too, that people have both heartache and love of it. And I'm one of those. I'm both, I have very mixed feelings. And we'll pass them out after, okay? Let's do that. All right? There's, what, what do you guys, do you guys still do at the beginning of school each day, the pledge? Yeah. Do you guys stand up? Before and after now? Oh my gosh. 
You only do it before, okay. What's in that pledge? It says, I pledge allegiance to the flag, to the, uh, with liberty and justice for all. We just stands. One nation. I skipped that part. <laughs> yep. I skipped the, I skipped the uh, under God part because that was added later on as part of a whole other thing. You guys will learn about later on as you grow up. But anyway, um, the flag for me represents really justice and equity. That's when I, when I feel most patriotic for me is when, guess what day it is? You guys have any ideas what day it is that, that I feel most? President's Day? No, I don't feel patriotic on President's Day. Labor Day? I feel, uh, yeah, Labor Day is okay. There, there's really an important day. Uh, Not Leprechaun Day. <laughs> Valentine's Day patriotic? I guess it's red. No. Halloween. <laughs> I, it was, I find them at Musty and you use here because I never heard, I, I, that was the one I was going to say. It's, no. The day I vote, the second Tuesday of November is when I feel most patriotic. Yeah, because I can speak up for my country on that day. I can take a stand and wave the flag on, on, on uh, the election day. <laughs> so that's why I feel, it's also your birthday sometimes? All right. Anyway, so that's justice. It's part of our government because, you know, there's the Justice Department and there's the court system, all that justice stuff. That's really important. That's one-third of our government. Then there's another thing we're going to be talking about today, and hopefully we'll get that slide up there. It's called equity. Slide. There we go. Come on. Ooh. What do you guys think of those two pictures? Um, that there's little kids trying to look at the, um, the uh, football court, and, they, and one of them cannot reach... Very good. As you can see on the left side, they all are equal, right? Mm -hmm. Is that fair? No. No. But if you work together, as Rory talked about, everybody can see, and that's equity. See the difference there? Mm -hmm. So equity doesn't mean to be equal. Sometimes you have to give up something, like the big tall guy, he gave up two boxes. No, he gave up one box. One box, yeah, to be equal to have that equity with the third, little, smallest person. Now, what would you call it if we took down the fence? Um, it would be all equal if you just stand against it. Be all equal, yeah? Yeah, if we just took down the fence, we wouldn't have to do it. It'd be freedom, actually. Because yeah. everybody would be standing high with the same level, and they could see the whole game. Because see, if you stood back a little bit, you aren't catching... <laughs> No, oh, well, that, that's part of the game of baseball. <laughs> it's actually a baseball field. <laughs> and you get a, you get a free ball. <laughs> you can hide behind the taller person. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys learned a little bit about that. Um, take the flag. And what I always do is I always, yep, I display it because I like to make that political statement for me. Thank you. We got 12 flags to pass out. I also forgot to mention that there was a time when I was watching a football game in a bar and Colin Kaepernick was taking a knee during the Pledge of Allegiance on a Monday night. I don't know if you guys remember that game. And what I found interesting was there were these guys in the bar, and they were yelling at Kaepernick all that bad stuff. Why isn't he standing? What is he doing? He's dishonoring the flag. And as the camera panned the crowd, there was a person, people in the fans wearing a flag, which is a violation of the flag code, which is more anti-American than kneeling for the flag. Just my thought on that. I get a little angry about the flag, <laughs> as you can see. I also was in the band, so I played the Pledge, not the Pledge of Allegiance, the Star Spangled Banner, I don't know how many times, and I love grading during Super Bowl, how the, how the anthems are. It's so much fun. 
And this year was really good. <laughs> you had Post Malone doing my country, not my country, to the um, America the Beautiful. And he's a frickin', sorry for the word, rock star. And he's playing a country ditty. You know, I loved it. And Reba McIntyre with the, uh, pledge, uh, the <laughs> Star Spangled Banner. That was a wonderful rendition too, up there. But not as good as Lady Gaga or Jimi Hendrix. And then you had Adira Day with the Black National Anthem. Little known fact, the Black National Anthem was named the National Anthem before the Star Spangled Banner by over a decade. Just so you know. And believe it or not, the Black National Anthem, Lift Every Voice, is in our gray hymnal. Just some little side lights on that. I didn't share with the, <laughs> kind of carrying it over here. All right, so now for the sermon. Before we begin, this is not a talk about what the experience of injustice or inequality. It is a talk about what I can do when I see folks experience the short side of justice and equity. And maybe give you ideas on what you can do so that we are all in this together. Now take a moment and contemplate what justice and equity mean to you and hold those thoughts to yourself. How do you express justice? How do you express equity? As you use, we place much value on those two words. I titled this service, I don't know if you guys saw the change I made, Truth, Justice, and the UU Way. To make a play not on the Pledge of Allegiance that we just talked about, but also because of a superpower that universalism gives us. And for the fans of DC Comics, you might know it. Anybody know the name of the first superhero character and his tagline? Starts with an S, where it's a big S. Superman. And what's his tagline? Truth, justice, and the American way. Except today, it's a little bit different. It's truth, justice, and a better tomorrow. The new one is way more universalist than the old jingoistic version. <laughs> no. I like, I like a better tomorrow, because it's going to be better tomorrow for everybody. Because we, we are not all Americans. We're in this world together. So how do I handle injustice and inequity when I see it? Well, the first step is to educate myself and grab a drink of water. Sorry. Last year about this time, I shared with you stories from a life-changing trip I took in September 2022 was the first post-COVID airplane trip that I took, went on. It was not a trip to some wonderful place you traveled to for vacation, no. My first post-pandemic trip was a pilgrimage. For those of you that are unfamiliar with what a pilgrimage is and how it differs from taking a tour, generally during a pilgrimage, the person traveling is immersed in the experience and does not communicate with the outside world much. No news, no email, maybe some 21st century social media posts. The pilgrims I'm talking about were not those folks who traveled from England in the 1600s, who are our forefathers or foreparents or whatever you want to call them. Those were the Puritans. Pilgrims to me are people who travel to a specific place, make spiritual expressions, hold rituals, and learn something deeper about themselves. Yes. I went on a pilgrimage. Me, the self-proclaimed atheist agnostic, went on a religious pilgrimage as my first post-pandemic plane trip. I made a pilgrimage to various civil rights sites in the state of Mississippi. That trip impacted me in so many ways that I am still discovering over 18 months after this trip and probably will discover further on in my life. I learned so much, like how slavery of the 1800s impacts us today. That people died just because of the color of their skin. How justice is not truly equal until black lives matter. And how people who have the least live what many identify as the good old American values. I'm not going to repeat that service here today. If you want to hear that service, I'll refer you to our YouTube channel, 
plug, to watch it the February 5th, 2023 service. I bring up this trip because that experience impacted me on what I believe justice and equity is, and one example of how I learn what about justice and equity today. Traveling and learning about injustice and inequity through the lens of others is one way we, you use, can explore the themes of justice and equity and see how unjust and inequitable our country is and has been. Any of you with an interest in doing the hard work of social justice in their neighborhood should take a guided trip to the Deep South. You could do a self-guided tour, but I doubt it will be as impactful as the guided tour. By doing a self-guided tour, you see and experience the world from your lens and not experience the lens of your guide's eye. That lens of the guide may be the only way to gain a glimmer, a glimmer of the experience of the other. As hard as I try, the white, cisgendered, heteronormative male that I am, I admit it, as much as I try, I cannot experience the trials and tribulations of the other. I cannot experience the other's experiences. But I can open my eyes my ears, and my heart, and see the other stories of the other, then, and only then, I may have the opportunity to gain a glimmer of their experience and communicate in a meaningful way with the other. When I do that heart work, that is when I start to gain the smallest understanding of what the other experiences. And when I gain that smallest understanding, I can only begin to probe the depths of what it's like to be the other. And as time went on from that September trip, I discovered that the more I reflect, the more I discover that justice and equity seem to be so far from our grasp as a nation. But the more I reflect, the better I know that deep in my heart, I do believe that we, we as a people will use our resources to build and sustain accessible and inclusive communities that our faith demands. Another way that I, choose, I explore justice and equity is to read. I read one nonfiction book and one nonfiction book simultaneously. No, not, not both in my open lap alternating between paragraphs. That, that would just harm me mentally. I read one or two chapters from one book one night, and then the next night I'll read another two chapters from the other one. That way I stay in balance. The fiction books I read are usually science fiction, fantasy, pulp fiction, or the hard-boiled investigator novels that I so much love. The nonfiction really fall into two camps, environmental and social justice issues. I read Braiding Sweetgrass, and I am reading the book I Am the Grand Canyon that is about the Havasupai, and I started be a Revolution by Ijma Alua. I discovered this book in an email from the Church of the Larger Fellowship. The Church of the Larger Fellowship, for those of you who don't know, is the, is the at-large church for the UU faith. It is based entirely on the internet and has some wonderful resources. And from what little I read, because I only got it Thursday, and I'm a slow reader, it is a wonderful book that's very interesting. In it, Ijama Alua describes marginalized people taking action on their own to make their community more just and equitable. It also includes her perspective, along with some action items that each of us can do to make the world a better place. Each chapter discusses an area where racism exists, such as labor. Did you know that in the past, labor unions were racist? Yeah. <laughs> um, our country's penal system, yeah, that's a little on the racist side. And disability and race, which is really interesting. I can't wait to open up that part of the book. Maybe the bookies can read it. Be a revolution. How do we do that? is what I'll spend, how do we do justice and equity is what I'll spend the rest of the time talking about. Last month, I talked about universalism and the call to treat each other with kindness. A universalist believes that we, right here and right now on this planet we call Earth, we are living in heaven. But I want to be very clear 
This message last month was not a passive one. A message that would, some would think, I don't need to do anything because I'm here in heaven. No. The message I was giving was a very active message and demands all of us to do the hard work so that we can create heaven here on earth. That heaven is found in justice and equity. But you say, Mark, the, the world is so unjust and inequitable. I'm just, what am I supposed to do? I'm just overwhelmed to, talk about the, to, to learn about heaven that you talk about. Well, that, that is where I will tell you, look around. Seek out the injustice and inequity and do the work to make it inequitable. You, I do not need to take on the whole problem. That would be unwise and foolhardy, and I might actually hurt myself. But I can start the same way as I would start a pilgrimage. I plan, and then I do. Each little action you do brings me that much closer to just an equitable world. That action can be as complex and daunting as running for elected office. But it can be as simple as showing up and doing some work right here, here in our neighborhood, helping our neighbors by distributing food. We routinely serve over 800 of our neighbors during our food pantry each and every month. By doing so, we are making this neighborhood a better place with more food security. Imagine for a moment, and a lot of this is imagination, if we were able to do that twice a month, how much better would this world be where our spiritual home is located? That is what creating equity is, creating a place where every person has the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. That is the type of hard work that needs doing. And if you do not have the muscle or the ability to wake up on Saturday, I don't have that ability for Saturdays. <laughs> there is other work that for us to do out there. You can support the use of the inclusive democratic process to make decisions within our community. Many of those important elections, those local elections, need your help as they can be as they, their decisions are made on just a handful of votes last time my county commissioner was up for election he won by 15 votes that's more than four times what's sitting right here in the sanctuary think about that 15 people made that election so if you have the gift of gab, an ability to take words spoken to you, ability not to take words spoken to you personally, and you can sit for hours on end trying to talk to people about getting out and voting, I have a job for you. And fill your will of, fill your will of justice and equity. Participating in phone banking and getting folks out to vote. And if you're curious on how to do that, you can come talk to me. I do it almost every year now. <laughs> And with today's technology, that's because we got some really cool technology, you don't need to sit in that old boiler room with the poor air conditioning using a pencil to dial the numbers. No, you can be at home on your computer or cell phone and let the computer, not your fingers, do the walking. I have spent many hours doing this work because it's important to me. I believe that justice, as I talked about, is one part of our government and is only is found in democracies. How can a totalitarian state have justice? Just look at what happened in Russia this past week or what happens in China every day. Those in power are the ones that weaponize justice to create what they see as justice. Democracy, when used properly, is the only thing that can dole that weapon of a totalitarian so that justice is equal. We have a long way to get to racism and systemic oppression, to see racism and systemic oppression is dismantled. But if we all work together, we can use that inclusive democracy to get into the good trouble and get to that diverse, multicultural, beloved community where we all thrive. Justice and equity work does not have to be centered around learning politics or religion. It can be a daily practice of the former universalism where all have the right to flourish with inherent dignity and worthiness. You can practice making the world a better place by treating a service worker with kindness, acknowledging people as you walk by on the street, by communicating with your eyes and face to the people you don't know, 
And what you're saying is, I see you. And if you're brazen and brave and know that you will not be harmed by taking action where no one else will, speak up when you see injustice occur. Each of these actions, as small as they are, do add up and make the world a more equitable and just place and a little more heaven here on earth. Now that we are ending the sermon, I'll ask you again, what does justice and equity mean to you? Has it changed now? Do you have the tools now to go out and express what it means? We do not need to attack the entire problem at one time. We just need to take the first easy action of many more to follow. So be imaginative and not just imagine a just and equitable world thinking of how beautiful this place would be. Go out and do something about it. Do anything to bend that beautiful arc of the moral universe towards justice. Amen. Blessed be. Please rise and body your spirit as we sing our closing hymn. We are a gentle, angry people. Except we're going to change the next to the last verse to we are all in this together. quoted Audre Lorde in the reading, and um, I have one more quote of hers that I'm going to share with you today. She said, there is no such thing as a single issue struggle because we do not live single issue lives. We talked a lot about justice and equity and access and freedom and the feelings that the American flag evokes in us today. And if you joined us last week, we talked specifically about disability justice. 
And as a justice-oriented community, we could spend every hour of every time that we spend together talking about justice, how we are striving for it, fighting for it, both in the ways that we internally embody it and the way that we can change our world to be more just and more fair. So the call to action today is actually to hearken back to some of the conversations we began last week on disability justice. And at the end of the service last week, we provided a resource share. And it was a piece of paper that was passed out, and these are sprinkled around the social hall. And I encourage you to recall some of these resources um, because there are so many more voices than we would ever have the time or ability to elevate. There are so many more um, lived experiences that we can learn from and listen to. And so as we strive to be just people, may we invite many voices into the conversation and may we um, operate with open ears and open hearts along the way. So this paper again is a list of a book, websites, articles, poetry, podcasts, and continued learning about disability justice specifically. Um, and I encourage you to continue diving into those. And again, you can find those in the social hall or if you'd like to talk to me about any of those resources or just a justice resource share altogether, uh, you can find me after the service. Today's benediction <clears throat> is called What We Do Matters by Laura Horton Ludwig. Spirit of life and love, we are here because we believe what we do matters. We are here because we believe how we live our life matters. That with every act of kindness or meanness, courage or fear, love or hate, we are weaving the fabric of the universe that holds us all. We are here because we need encouragement. We need strength. Because so often, we get distracted. We get in a rush. We don't think. We choose the easy way, when the harder path is what our spirits truly long for. We are here because none of us are perfect. But together, we inspire one another to try again, to take another step. We are here because we have felt the stirrings of love and grace in our hearts and hands, and we crave for more of that. For ourselves, and not only for ourselves, for everyone. We are here because how we live matters. Blessed be be at peace, go in love. And our joy with thee. We release that which is called with love and gratitude, and we extinguish the flame, but not our commitment to being a beacon in the desert. This burns brightly, brightly until we gather again. Every Sunday we have room for three announcements to be read. Uh, if you want your announcement read, please email Irma by Thursday and she'll get it to the worship team and make sure that it's in our script. When you do that, please include the name of the event, the date and time, and the contact name, and no more than a 30-word description. Our first announcement uh, is that the Las Vegas Men's Chorus is a LGBTQIA aligned group with the mission to strengthen our community and allies through musical performances. The chorus is performing their spring show entitled The British Are Coming on Sunday, March 24th at 4 p.m. on the UNLV campus. And for more information about that, you can see Breton. Uh, we still have two open spots for delegates to the UUA Pacific Western Regional Association Conference, which is from April 19th through the 20th. If you're interested in learning more about that or how to get involved in UUA work altogether, you can reach out to Megan, um, myself, Mark, kind of find any of us and we can get you to the right place if that's piquing your interest. And thirdly, 
Uh, if you've been a part of our community for a while, you know that Article 2 is an ongoing conversation that we're having. Some of the foundational building blocks of Unitarian Universalism are being debated and voted on and uh, as building blocks are, they're evoking lots of feelings among people in our community. So if you'd like to have a conversation about Article 2, Margaret is hosting that uh, every first and third Sunday after service in the library. So feel free to join them for what is sure to be a good discussion. Uh, there are always more announcements and events this week and in the coming weeks. We have busy community here, so we encourage you to head to our webpage at uuclv.org where you can find out everything that's going on. Thank you a million times over to Kay and Richard for the music today. I want to cry as I'm saying this because it was so moving to have music in the sanctuary. Uh, thank you to Rory for the story and to Bobby for the thoughts on stewardship and the children who helped light the chalice. And mainly thank you to you for being with us here today. Next Sunday, join Susanna and friends for a conversation on showing up for racial justice. Uh, go in peace, justice, and love. Thank you for being here.